Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku. The vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Same thing on iTunes, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's highlight a few stories, do a brief post-mortem on just three stories that have caught my eye following week eight of the National Football League's 2014 season. First, let's talk about the Redskins, their issues at quarterback. Now, understand there's a political scene brewing there in Washington. These owners want to do more than win games. They actually want to sell tickets. They want fans to show up. They want to make a profit, right? If it's a tie, if two quarterbacks have the same ability for the Redskins, in my opinion, in 2014, that tie is going to go to RG3, right? I believe Daniel Snyder, the owner of the Washington Redskins, just feels that RG3 is the more charismatic uh, player that you can build an ad campaign around, right? Whether or not he's more effective on the field, right? RG3 is a guy who, you know, won a Heisman, right? Is well-spoken, is in some ad campaigns, think Subway, right? And... He's fun to watch. You see him take off in the pocket, and he's an athlete. He looks like a deer devil, right? The problem is, and keep in mind, my perspective is just that of someone trying to make money betting on football. The problem is, RG3 to me is, at best, the third best quarterback on the Washington Redskins. As I've said in earlier videos, I think Kirk Cousins is better. I think Colt McCoy is better. Now understand, between Cousins and McCoy, they're two different types of quarterbacks. Kirk Cousins has the same problem that Jay Cutler and Geno Smith have. He's too loose with the football. He's too much of a swashbuckler. He's too much of a gunslinger. He throws the ball downfield into coverage. He throws interceptions. Right? Make no mistake, though, in terms of possible yardage, I believe Kirk Cousins has much higher upside than RG3. I understand many pundits in the industry disagree with me. Right? But I believe it's easier to correct the problem where a quarterback is too much of a gunslinger than it is to correct a problem when a quarterback just can't operate from the pocket. Right? Now contrast Kirk Cousins with Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy is more of an Alex Smith quarterback. Right? Understand, Colt McCoy is so judicious with the football that even before Monday night, for his career playing with some bad teams, Colt McCoy had thrown for more touchdowns than interceptions. Right? Now understand, Alex Smith has had a tremendous amount of success with the Kansas City Chiefs. Right? The Chiefs were in the playoffs last year. The Chiefs, quite frankly, are in the hunt again this year, you look at Colt McCoy's completion percentage for the Washington Redskins, right? Two games ago, he completed more than 90% of his passes. On Monday night against the first place Dallas Cowboys in Dallas, he completes more than 80% of his passes. Let me just be blunt. Redskin fans, if you want to win this season, you need to go with Colt McCoy. Your plan B should be Kirk Cousins, right? If you see RG3 out there, in my opinion, that's just pure politics and marketing. That'll show me that you're not serious about winning games. Let me make another point. The Skins' next two games are against the Vikings and Tampa. 
Redskin Nation, you actually have a chance to get back in the playoff hunt. Don't throw it away on marketing and PR, right? If the Skins are silly enough to replace a quarterback who just completed more than 80% of his passes in winning a divisional game on Monday Night Football, then quite frankly, you're not a serious enough team for a gambler to consider. Let's talk about another development. I believe it's clear right now, and I believe the insiders know this. It's October the 28th, 2014. It's clear right now that the best quarterback from last year's draft is Teddy Bridgewater. Now think about it. In Minnesota, his offensive coordinator is Norv Turner, a former head coach. Keep in mind, Norv is the guy who worked way back when with a guy named Troy Aikman. Three Super Bowl ring Troy Aikman. Hall of Famer Troy Aikman. Right? Norv Turner is a guy who is offensive. Right? He, he wants his offense to be clicking on all cylinders. Now think about this. Teddy Bridgewater, who started the season on the bench, wasn't he the college quarterback who was supposed to have had the terrible pro day last year? Well, understand this last Sunday, North Turner had a rookie quarterback put the ball up 42 times. That's how much they trust Teddy Bridgewater. 42 pass attempts. No picks. Right? If you saw that Minnesota game, guys were high-fiving Bridgewater. I'm not saying the offense was a juggernaut. Far from it. But understand, they won that game in overtime. Bridgewater completed better than 50% of his passes. Right? They've literally given Bridgewater adult assignments. He's not being coddled in Minnesota. And what I like with Teddy is he's not randomly throwing interceptions like Jay Cutler or Geno Smith. Right? Keep an eye on Teddy Bridgewater. He is a talent. Right now he's under the radar. Finally, let me say this. If you're a gambler, one of the biggest games of the year is about to go down. It's the New Orleans Saints at the Carolina Panthers. Understand, these two teams are battling for their division lead. I know their records aren't great, but trust me when I say, especially with regard to the Saints, right? The winner of this division could have legs. I personally consider Drew Brees and Cam Newton to be among the best quarterbacks in this league folks it's a quarterback league let's talk about the Saints understand the Saints just threw down without Pierre Thomas a hundred and ninety three rushing yards against the Green Bay Packers right they had four hundred and ninety five yards of total offense I'm telling you this team has a manageable schedule we'll talk about it Right, And if this team gets the jump on Carolina and can find a way to win next weekend's game, then you're talking about a situation where anything is possible. In fact, the game's actually the Thursday night game. Right? If you're a futures better, you need to look hard at the Saints. Now, understand Carolina is in a precarious position. Carolina needs to win this game to stay ahead of the Saints. Because next week, they face the Philadelphia Eagles in Philly. Now, understand the Eagles are a team that made the playoffs last year. That hosted a playoff game last year. If you look at the Eagle record, you're going to see a team that, quite frankly could have beaten San Francisco, right? Could have beaten the Arizona Cardinals. They lost both games, but understand they were in the hunt. As it is, 
they beat the Indianapolis Colts. I think the Eagles are one of the better teams in the NFL. I think asking Carolina a week after playing their chief divisional rival, the Saints, to travel to Philly, to beat Philly in Philly, is a bit too much. Right? And so the point is this. Carolina has to win this game against the Saints. If they don't, I believe they fall off. I believe the Saints then take over that division. But let me say this. Understand the risk involved, and it's substantial. The three games the Saints play after this game against Carolina are at home against the San Francisco 49ers, at home against the Cincinnati Bengals, and at home against the Baltimore Ravens. Just to understand, few teams in this league play better at home than the New Orleans Saints. You just saw them dissect the Packers, and what made that game interesting was the second half when the Saints moved away from the Packers. Also, if you look at Saint defense, you're going to notice they're awfully good against the run. Right? And so, keep an eye on the Saints versus the Panthers. Certain things hurt the Saints, right? It's the idea that they're going to have to travel on the road on a short week after a must-win game that they won over the Packers. Fair enough. But if the Saints win this game, my recommendation to you is to make it to a betting window and to put some money on the futures on the Saints. Right? I'm not saying they necessarily win the NFC. Far from it. What I am saying, though, is if they're able to take control of this division, because I am expecting Carolina to lose next week, against Philly, unless Philly suffers catastrophic injury this week, right? If the Saints take control of this division, that's all they have to do to make the playoffs, right? And just understand, the Saints at home are a tall order. Just understand, last year, the Saints on the road in the playoffs beat Philly in Philly, right? So keep an eye on the whole thing. Let me also say this, too. Subscribers here know I view the San Francisco 49ers as overrated, right? Consider the fact that if the Saints beat the Panthers on Thursday, the Saints will have extra time to rest before their matchup against the 49ers. I think the Saints beat the Niners. I think Carolina loses to the Eagles. And then I think an interesting dynamic takes place. But that only happens if the Saints are able to beat Carolina in Carolina. And understand, Carolina had their game won this last weekend against Seattle before Russell Wilson's last drive. Right? So pay close attention to this weekend's game between the Saints and the Panthers. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and dwyersportsbetting.com for premium picks. Also, check out our pay channel here on YouTube, Dwyer Sports Betting. One word. Thanks for stopping by.